Hey guys, it's Paul here at Impulsive Culinary, and this is a magical time of year. Yes, indeed. It's back to school time. Yes. Am I a little excited about that? Yes, I am. And before we get started on what we're cooking in this video, I thought I'd invite a couple of experts to come and talk about going back to school. So welcome with me, Cassidy and Samantha. Guys, is it back to school time? Yes. Wow. Who's going back to school? Anybody? Anybody? Me. Wow. Okay. Um, Hold on, you're the oldest, so you get to start, okay? Is that all right, Sam? Okay. Tell me what you are most excited about going back to school. Um, that my sister can, um, is coming to my school this year. You and guys are going to the same gonna, school? And I'm going to have um, a lot of new teachers yeah? mm -hmm. and stuff. What else? And I'm really excited because um, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of different stuff and a uh, different gym teacher at my school. That sounds very cool. What about you, Sam? What are you most excited about? Are you going to a brand new big girl school this year? Yeah, Anna, I'm excited um, for Halloween because at Halloween we get to have a costume party. The best. You get to dress up and have fun with all of your friends. Yeah, yeah we get to have all... supper there. Wow, you get to eat food at school. That sounds like a lot of fun. So who's excited for back to school? Anybody? <laughs> but Sam, you know what? That's I was expecting a scream. You guys put up your hands very politely. Give yourselves a little hand of applause. <laughs> In that case, thank you for joining me on Impulsive Culinary and Video this Saturday video featuring Cassidy and Samantha. Say bye bye. Bye. All right, let's get down to the recipes. Okay, so one of the biggest challenges of back to school is uh, making sure that you've got enough stuff in the fridge to keep the kids fed every day for lunch. And uh, while in our family, as you saw, two kids. So it kind of doubles, triples, depending on the size of your family. Uh, fruits and vegetables are easy enough to get at a reasonable price and chop those up and put them in the lunchbox. But finding a good, affordable, and healthy option for lunch meat, that can be a challenge. And so I just want to propose to you a notion that um, if you're ever interested in getting some organic meat, all right, and using that as sort of the main ingredient for your lunch meat sandwiches and all that kind of stuff, um, I'd be hard pressed to, uh, to see if you can go to your deli counter okay, at the local grocery store and find some of these sliced meat products, whether it's roasted chicken breast or turkey breast, uh, black forest ham and all of these things. They often go, at least in our part of the country, all right, for around two to four dollars per hundred grams. And that's when it's a good price, all right? Sometimes it's more. Um, and guess what, guys? That comes out to around 10 to 20 bucks per pound of product. Now, if you go to your uh, specialty store or your health food store and you have a look for some of this organic meat, whether it's chicken breast or ham, you're going to find that it's around 10 bucks a pound, not much more than that. So for the very same price, all right, you're getting a product that is uh, ethically uh, produced, um, it has no hormones or antibiotics, it's organic, it's good, uh, it's good for your kids, uh, makes you feel good, sleep well at night maybe, and, uh, and that's to me like the, the best option of all. To pay the same price or less than what you get at the deli counter, which uh, who knows what's in there, right? Now, another thing, too, is if you're not buying organic meat and you just get a chicken breast or a turkey breast or a piece of ham, well, that's even cheaper, guys. Please don't waste your money at the deli counter. That's the whole point, okay? So in this recipe video, I'm going to be talking to you about making your very own maple mustard glazed ham that you can use as lunch meats and sandwiches and all kinds of good stuff. And of course, uh, you know, uh, we're big fans of uh, organic, and this is a, a product from uh, the Ferme Valens. Uh, our friends uh, here in Huntingdon, Quebec, is a local uh, cooperative of organic farmers that are making some really top quality stuff. And this is not much more than 10 bucks a pound, guys, for a, a pre-cooked, smoked chunk of boneless ham. And uh, that's what we're going to use in the recipe today. All right, and um, I'm going to put a link up to a video that I made uh, a while back for my roasted Cajun turkey breast or chicken breast recipe. This is good stuff too. It's a very uh, cost-effective option for making some uh, very affordable lunch meats for your back-to-school uh, lunch packing adventures. All right, so here's what you need. Guys, this is going to be quite possibly the shortest ingredient list ever on Impulsive Culinarian. So here's how it goes. Um, get yourself one pound of boneless pre-cooked smoked ham. Uh, some places they call that a city ham. Uh, here in Quebec, in French, we call it a toupie. Um, so uh, however the naming convention of your area, get yourself one pound of boneless pre-cooked smoked ham. Along with that, you're going to need two tablespoons of real maple syrup, two tablespoons of sugar, and two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. 
And that's it. All right, let's put this together and make some lunch meats for back to school. Ah, uh, yes, back to school. What a great time for parents, right? <laughs> we love our kids, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, it's just a very important time to uh, get back to normal, right? So when the kids are excited, that's a good thing. Um, and they can be even more excited when you're putting good stuff in their lunch that they enjoy and that you know is good for them. Now, um, I used to uh, be one of the, uh, the offenders of buying expensive lunch meats from the deli counter. You know, I think it's, it's okay if there's a very specialty product. Some of these uh, beautiful Italian cured meats, I get that. You know what, uh, I buy them every once in a while for special occasions. But the regular fare, turkey, chicken, ham, I find that there's absolutely no excuse. Uh, nothing stopping us from getting a good cut of meat, organic or otherwise, and bringing it home and cooking it ourselves. Uh, to save some money. And so this might be the shortest recipe video that I've made so far, but I think it's well worth uh, demonstrating that it is so simple. It is totally simple. Guys, you spend maybe a half an hour of your weekend preparing this and you literally have lunch meat for the rest of the week. So here's your back to school episode uh, dedicated to making some really good quality organic sliced ham. So the main goal here is basically to reheat this slowly in a 350 degree oven until it's really nice and warm inside. It's already cooked, so you're not trying to prepare it so much as you're just trying to warm it up and at the same time infuse some flavor. Proud Canadian, I'm going with a maple mustard glaze, all right? <laughs> you can do it anything you want. Um, however, this I find is one of the tastiest ways of preparing this kind of a ham. Okay, so first step, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Okay, so let's talk about cooking times for ham. This is already cooked. It's pre-cooked. It's smoked ham. Uh, so really, it's just about warming it up. And uh, how long do you warm it up for? So the, the going rule is uh, around 15 minutes per pound at 350 degrees. Now, given that I'm only using one pound of meat, I'm going to give it just a little bit longer. I'm going to give it around 20 minutes. Um, uh, but I'm going to make sure to baste it every 10 minutes. So when it goes into the pan, I'm going to baste it. I'm going to cook it for 10 baste it again, and let it finish off for the last 10 minutes. And because it's such a small piece, I don't want it to dry out, so I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna cover it with tin foil. And you know my trick, I'll show you that in a second with the, with the parchment paper and all that nonsense. All right, so get yourself a baking pan. I'll show you what I use. Best baking dish in town, eight inch cake pan, super simple. So because uh, basically I don't wanna clean it up or have to scrape it when I'm done, this is some gooey stuff getting in the bottom of this pan. So I'm gonna line it with tin foil and then with parchment paper. So this adds absolutely zero value to the flavor, right? <laughs> it's just so I don't have to clean the pan. So I'm putting my tin foil in there and I'm leaving a great big flap so that I can cover it up. And you know how much I love tin foil touching my food. So I'm gonna put a piece of parchment paper in there. And when my hand is in, all I have to do is sort of open and close the flap at the 10 minute interval to rebaste. Okay, so that's the start. Okay, so there's a lovely piece of organic smoked cured ham. Um, when you're making a big ham for uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas, and the thing about doing that sort of crosshatch cut thing, that's really for aesthetics, that's for looks. Uh, it, yes, it absolutely retains some of the glaze or the whatever uh, rub or coating that you're putting on top. Uh, it certainly helps with that, but it's really for looks. And because I'm gonna, I'm gonna slice this up into thin slices, I'm not gonna present it on a table and ta-da, here you go, kids. <laughs> this is gonna get cut immediately and stored in the fridge so I can make sandwiches. So uh, not that I'm not concerned about the look, but I'm certainly less interested in the aesthetics. So I am gonna do a couple of slices across the sides and the top, just so that my glaze gets in and infuses with, with, with flavor, but uh, I'm not gonna do a million little cuts and stud it with cloves. Save that for Thanksgiving. So just a few cuts for flavor sake. So there you go. You see, I just made a few cuts, probably a few more than I wanted to, but uh, that's really just to let all of that beautiful uh, glaze get in there and infuse my ham with as much flavor as possible. All right, let's make a glaze. Small mixing bowl, let's get the mix. All right, so two tablespoons of each. I'm just gonna eyeball it, real maple syrup, Dijon mustard, the real thing. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Okay, so a little note about sugars, okay? Some of you have asked, what do you use, Paul? What exactly do you use? Well, I mean, white sugar, brown sugar, you can use whatever you want. If like us, you're avoiding uh, too much of the refined sugars and all those kinds of products, we use this uh, by Camino, okay? Uh, the golden cane sugar, which is basically to replace white sugar. Now, in a recipe like this, where you want to use brown sugar, we all know that 
the regular refined stuff. It's just white sugar with molasses. Right? It's not really any different. So what we go for is this whole brown sugar. It's all, it's called a, a what is this? Musco muscovado. All right. Did I say that right? My Spanish friends. <laughs> so this is what we're using to replace brown sugar. Um, again, by the same company, but uh, one for light, one for dark. So I'm going to use two tablespoons of the brown sugar. All right, give that a good mix until all the sugar is dissolved into your mustard and maple syrup. All right, get your hand into your lined baking dish and start glazing. Be generous. There's probably a lot more than you need. <laughs> all right, once it's all basted with half of your glaze, cover it up and put it in the oven. First round, 10 minutes, center rack. Sharp knife, that's the key. And of course, practicing, just gotta practice. The more you practice, the better you get. And you can get that ham or chicken or whatever meat that you're cooking to these beautiful thin slices, you're gonna be the home deli. Home deli. Okay, rebaste a second time and get it back in the oven. Yes, yes. Okay, another 10 minutes out. Let's get that out. Oh, that smells good. Yeah, man. Okay. Let's get some tongs and get that onto a cutting board. So there you go, guys, a maple mustard glazed ham. We basically took a very simple product and we bumped up the flavor a few notches. This is really tasty, guys. So let's cut it up as thin as we can. Hone the blade. So if at first you don't succeed, practice again. We just want to get this as thin as we possibly can, right? Let's try and approximate what they do at the deli. So a thin piece like that, that'll go in a sandwich. I don't feel like I'm wasting meat on that, that's for sure. Might have to try it. Mm. A little shot of sweetness in there. Can actually taste the mustard a little bit. Oh, that's good. So there you go. Without trying to be too much a perfectionist, I don't know, I'm not even going to count, but look at that. That's a lot of slices of meat. Now, how much would it cost you at the deli counter? Well, you'd be the judge. It's very simple to do the math. Guys, I'm telling you, this is definitely the most cost-effective solution. For the same price of regular meat at the deli counter, I've got myself some beautiful organic roasted ham slices right here. You'd be the judge. So there's some lunch meat you could be proud to put in your kid's lunchbox, all right? Some nice, beautiful, home-roasted, organic meat in this case, all right? And uh, not cost prohibitive at all. And you know what? Not to mention, that's great for home. Forget lunches. It's a really great taste. You get that lovely maple flavor, just a little shot of the mustard, and not so much that the kids are going to be like, I don't like this. It just really, really tastes good. So... I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to put up another link to my roasted Cajun chicken breast recipe. That's another great alternative, guys, for uh, providing some cost-effective lunch meats for back to school that the kids are going to love. This stuff will go in no time. Uh, but one pound of ham should last you the week. You can put that in a nice airtight container in the fridge, and it'll last you throughout the week for all your sandwiches. So my name is Paul from Impulsive Culinary, and guys, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, and share it with anyone that you know that is interested in saving some money in when they're sending their kids back to school. Stay tuned. Every Wednesday, guys, we're doing the Wines Day Live updates right here on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, uh, and we're going to let you know what's happening in the Impulsive Culinary world with some shout-outs and some fun features every Wednesday night. And I get to crack open a brand new bottle of wine. I look forward to seeing you then, guys. Thanks for watching. Yay!